Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Happy 2024. I'm glad to be back making videos again. So uh, I've actually been back from vacation for a while now, but it has been horrifically cold here. Uh, we've been pretty much with highs of 30s and below for the last month or so. And um, anyway, finally we got a nice warm day, relatively warm. It's, it's like 55 degrees outside right now. So I am going to take advantage of it and First of all, I'm going to wash this car because I haven't washed it in like two months since the dyno video. And then I am going to replace my front splitters. And the reason is because, you know, I'll be the first to admit when I screw up and I screwed up, I severely underestimated a U-turn. And unfortunately, by the time I figured it out, I had cars coming in that direction and I had cars behind me already. So I was like, well, it is what it is. So I went for it. The very bottom lip of the splitter on the passenger side, it touched the top of the curb and that was enough to snap it unfortunately so anyway it's time to make a change i didn't go carbon fiber i went with gloss black and i went with a full lip this time so i just want to do something different so let's see how it looks first of all though let's get this car washed because it's nasty okay so i had the car up on ramps you see here this is a splitter but i was also never happy with the fitment you see this that I was never never able to fully get it to sit correctly. So that's part of the reason why I wanted to do something different. Let me see the same here. And you see every time it would hit the ground, like if I bottomed out somewhere, it would it would scratch on the on the bumper. So that's all other stuff. Anyway, here's a close-up of the damage. See there? See the weaving? So my next step now is gonna go ahead and remove these two, clean the surface. Okay, so here are the old splitters. And this is what we got under the surface. It's not as bad as I expected, to be honest. I just got to remove some of the old double-sided tape. I did have them secured with double-sided tape and screws. Uh, so it came off pretty easy. It just wasn't too much of a fight. I did have to use a trim tool to kind of pry them. But here we go. That's like some paint coming off, as expected. I mean, this whole bumper has been sandblasted. This was me, so, and I'm gonna take care of this the next time I detail the car, hopefully in the spring. I have to say, I, I like this. <laughs> it looks good. Um, honestly, yeah, there's still the scuffing that's there, as expected. But it's not a bad look at all. Like, I actually think it looks really nice with the car and whatnot. Uh, I'm still going to put on the lip, but I, I guess I'm just uh, realizing how nice this looks, considering that I haven't seen it like this in over four years. So this is pretty neat. Anyway, let's open that box. Let's see. All right, I'm a little nervous because I've had this for over a month now. I just haven't been able to, well, I should have opened it, but I wanted to open it with you guys. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. It's a whole shebang. Oh, wow. That's a lot of fun. All right. So we have tape and a whole lot of hardware. A whole lot of it. Jesus. Oh, this is neat. Wait, what? Is this real? No, that's plastic. Okay, cool. Fake carbon fiber. Oh crap! <laughs> I thought I got an I thought I got an all black. I, I guess either they sent me or I ordered the wrong one, but hey, carbon fiber. Fake carbon fiber, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. It feels like ABS plastic to be honest. So far so good. I don't see any damage. Oh wow. Okay, so that's gonna go here. 
me get you a close-up of what this looks like. And again, this is fake. This didn't cost much. Are there imperfections? Absolutely. But do I care? Not at all. Because it's a front lip and it's my daily driver. So do I want to spend $600 for a, a true carbon fiber front lip? Absolutely not. Because the same thing that happened to that can happen to that very expensive piece. This was less than $150. It looks good. And yeah, I'm happy with this. Look at the difference in the weave. Obviously this being four and a half years old, and this here obviously being fake, but from a distance, does it pass the four foot test? Absolutely, it does. <laughs> this is good. I'm excited. So let's go ahead and try to get this on the car. There's no instructions, so I'll just have to figure it out. It doesn't seem like hard. Okay guys, I'm gonna try my best to show you what I did here. So I just wanted to start assembling it off the car because it's gonna make my life a lot easier. So what I did is I took the, the driver's side splitter and I, and I secured it to the, I guess, the lip <laughs> and you see here I used to provide a hardware these are all eight millimeter nuts these are locking nuts and the screws are just regular Phillips number two uh, because of the design the shape in this it is very difficult to get into some of these further in here so what I did I used a long eight millimeter wrench and I was able to get get the nut in there to secure it and now we're good here so now I'm gonna repeat it on that side Okay, so now both splitters are on the lip. We're looking good. And the next thing for me, I think, is going to be to join the two halves of the lips. So if you see here, there's these little holes there. They're little depressions. And they're meant to take these pegs on this side. You see the, the, this one here, and then there's that one up there. They're gonna fall into it like this. There we go. Now, I believe that that's what these small screws are four and then I'm left with four self-tapping screws I assume that they're gonna be one two one two then nothing here for the center peg doesn't make any sense but I probably have some self-tapping screws that I can use for that anyway I have all that extra hardware there you see I used up most of it only in the far corners of both lips that I not use any and I still have all of that left Something else to note, guys, is the fact that you see in the back of the lip, you have this and this. Those are to go up here. To the back of the bumper, you got one there, and you got one there. So I took off those 8mm screws there because they are actually going to mount the, the lip at the bottom. So at the bottom of the lip, you're going to have those that are BMW, the addition of the self-tapping screws here. And along the top of the splitter, you're going to have that double-sided tape. Here's a quick tip for you guys. Uh, so once you have the double-sided tape in here, just go ahead and pull off a little corner of it and make sure that it reaches out like this. So that way, once you have it in position, you're not fighting an, in, you know, if you're having to adjust, you're not fighting the entire length of it. You're just fighting the little bit, little bit that's actually making contact. And once you have the, you have it where you want to be, you just pull off on the red string and you're done. Okay, the tape is in place. Let's go ahead and get this on. I'm gonna try to bring it up evenly so that way it doesn't put that much pressure on the, that, the center points here. I have two screws ready. All right, Let's see how we do this. <laughs> I think what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and put this side on it and then walk it in.
Okay, now that I have it in place on the sides and the bottom, now I just need to do these bosses. Obviously this bumper has flex over time because it is 12 years old now. I'm gonna start by doing the, the screws in the front of each of these, and then I'll do the ones in the back, just so that way you can start bringing this up this way. All right, next one. And you know what? This was a great value purchase, I have to say, because for, for what I paid for it, the way that it looks, and honestly, like, yeah, it's plastic, but you, you, you can tell quality plastic versus cheap plastic. That felt like quality plastic to me, so I can't complain. And, you know, I know there's always people out there that are going to say, oh, why did you get that fake stuff? Why don't, why don't you just get the real stuff? It's my daily driver. Things like this are going to happen to me. They're going to happen to you. Do you want to cry over 600 bucks or do you want to cry over 100, 140 bucks, 150 bucks, however much this was, you know, like you got to take that into account. Like, yeah, if it was my weekend car that I only take out on Sundays with good weather, uh, yeah, I would want the real stuff. But for a daily, why would I bother? No, I have better things to spend my money on than that. You do you, though. You spend whatever you want on your car. But for me, I am happy with this. This works great. Anyway, guys, I have a lot of projects that I have the parts for here in the garage, ready to go, but it's winter time. And with that comes the limitations of how cold it is, if it's snowing out there, if I have to worry about ice out there, you know, like it, it I'm not gonna push it like that. So, you know, as weather allows, I will continue doing more projects and bring it to you guys. So please stick around, uh, be patient. Once spring comes around, we got a whole lot more projects for both the BMW and the Jetta. So thank you so much, guys. See you next time.